Mid ocean ridges are um, composed of the longest chain of volcanoes that we have on our planet. Uh, it's a chain of volcanoes that stretches about 40,000 miles or 60,000 kilometers around the globe, um, a little bit like scenes on a baseball. And the mid-ocean ridges mark a boundary between two what are called tectonic plates, which are portions of the crust that you can think of as like jigsaw puzzle pieces that in fact are moving relative to each other. And along the mid-ocean ridges, the, um, these tectonic plates are moving apart and magma or molten rock um, ascends between them and erupts on the seafloor to form volcanoes. So it's essentially the place where we're repaving the surface of our planet. So a hydrothermal vent system is um, nothing more than a Yellowstone, but at the bottom of the ocean. At Yellowstone National Park, we have geysers um, and those are formed because groundwater or rainwater percolates into the ground and then gets heated up because there's a hot spot or some molten magma beneath Yellowstone. And that fluid then gets heated up, becomes very buoyant and discharges back up to the ground. Um, in the oceans, it's the same thing. It's essentially a convection system. Just like you have a saucepan of water on the stove, as you heat that water, the hot water rises to the surface and the cooler water from the surface goes down to the bottom of the pan and gets heated up. In the seafloor system, what happens is as that fluid goes down into the rocks, it chemically reacts with those rocks. As you go deeper down, temperatures get higher and different reactions go on. So we've gone from a cold, alkaline, oxygenated seawater to a fluid that's very acidic, has no oxygen, um, and as it continues down, as it gets deeper and deeper, it starts to remove the metals from the rocks. So the fluid that comes back up to the surface has a lot of these metals in the solution. Once it mixes with seawater, becomes oxygenated, temperature decreases, those elements precipitate out as uh, sulfides, iron, copper, and zinc sulfides. The vents actually um, are made of minerals that have been removed from the ocean crust. So it's a way of concentrating metals into a small or large deposit. The Gackle Ridge is one of the slowest spreading ridges along the mid-ocean ridge system. And as that ridge is spreading, there isn't any volcanic activity, which means there isn't a volcanic layer of rocks on the top. Instead, what you have is rocks that form the layer of the earth called the mantle, which is the layer right below the crust, become exposed along that ridge. Now those rocks have a very different chemistry, and hence the chemical reactions that go on between seawater and those rocks are different. And they produce different um, elements, they produce different gases, and hence the, um, the, the material or the gases that the organisms use as their energy source is different. So consequently, we might have, for example, different types of organisms along those areas, perhaps some that we've never seen before. The other reason that this is interesting is because those types of rocks are very similar in chemistry to what we believe was the early type of volcanic activity on Earth. And consequently, those areas may be our best analogs for hydrothermal activity on early Earth. My greatest hope is that we find a whole range of different types of hydrothermal systems, both high and low temperature, some actually on the volcanic areas and some on the areas with exposed mantle rock, because that would provide us with a great comparison. Um, although I'm not a biologist, I always love to see the biology uh, because the animals are always absolutely fascinating. My greatest fear, I suppose my greatest fear is either we lose 
are autonomous underwater vehicles, since this is something that is a pretty high risk operation, or we don't find any vents. And that would be, that would certainly be a major disappointment. This podcast was produced by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution with funding from the National Science Foundation. For more information, visit us on the web at polardiscovery.whoi.edu.